Allow me to introduce you to a friend and teacher that I've been working with for the last 17 years. My friend carries the wisdom of eons, but is vital today, and will be even more important, I think, in our future. My friend is the Bow River, its tributaries, and its drainage area. Focusing on it over the last 17 years in my work as a hydrotechnical engineer and environmental manager with the City of Calgary has helped me think about resilience in new ways. Maybe getting to know the flow of the bow will help you use the natural systems around you to solve problems in your work and in your life as well. By the time it reaches Calgary, the Bow River drains about 9,000 square kilometers of beautiful southern Alberta landscape. The basin fans out in the Canadian Rockies, so even compared to its neighboring basins, it has a lot of steep, high elevation terrain. That area is primarily in parks and protected zones, so it retains its natural hydrologic function and character. That land receives more rain and snow than the lower land to the east, and like a steep roof, generates runoff quickly. The Bow River balances on a sharp fulcrum. If there's rain and snow, a lot of water reaches our rivers quickly, but things can turn around very quickly when there isn't rain and snow happening. It's inherently a system that is drawn to extremes. What does that mean? That means that a river that can change from drought to flood in just hours. It's a show pony and a bucking bronco at the same time. The bow flows east off the spine of the Rockies through the foothills to Calgary, also a place of stark contrast. At Calgary, the river and the basin really change. East of Calgary, the bow eases onto the plains where less snow and rain and flatter land dotted with prairie wetlands means a slower flowing river and more moderated response. The Bow joins the Old Man River, which then joins the South Saskatchewan River, which joins the Nelson River before finally reaching the Arctic Ocean at Hudson's Bay. A drop of water starting at Bow Summit will travel 2,000 kilometers and descend almost 3,000 meters vertically on its way from the mountains to the sea. This is a cross-continental tour that even Taylor Swift would be envious of. And yes, that comment is for my 15-year-old daughter. Like a ribbon draped over the land, the river and its valley are a conduit of influence. The river ties people, plants, animals, and businesses together across ecoregions, economies, and time frames. These distances and time frames can be really hard to fathom. What we do with the land and with the water today can have effects that last all the way to the ocean and persist for decades or even centuries. Flow connects, so what we do matters, far from where and when we do it. So perhaps the strongest lesson that the bow has whispered to me as I've studied it is that of interconnection. Our interconnection with it and its interconnection across landscapes, ecologies, and time frames. The Bow River uh, flows through, through Calgary. Calgary was actually formed at the confluence of the Bow River and one of its larger tributaries, the Elbow River, a place known to the Blackfoot Nation as Mokinstis. Calgary has always been a place of coming together. And the river provides many, many ecosystem services and resources. Calgary grew around the river, and the river is responsible for much of the character of the city. Think about timber, for instance. The Bow Basin provided the logs, provided the means of transport to bring the logs to Calgary, and in many cases provided the energy to mill the boards. So as Calgary has grown, it's grown radially around its rivers, and the river provides so many ecosystem services, they're hard to count. Almost autonomically, we rely on them, though we don't think of them often or consciously. If my friend the Bow River were having a moving day, we would owe it the courtesy of showing up early with boxes ready to pack, and the Bow River as a dynamic system is always moving. The Bow and the Elbow Rivers have always provided the drinking water for Calgary. And so this system that surrounds us, there is a vast system of water supply infrastructure. That infrastructure includes treatment plants, thousands of kilometers of pipe, and thousands of valves and chamber. By extension of this system, our rivers encircle us here in every place with potable water plumbing. 
since our bodies actually use and cycle water, two-thirds of me, and actually two-thirds of you as well, if you've been in the city for more than a couple of weeks, literally is the water of the Bow River. And when you think of that water interacting with the land, collecting into tributaries, joining our rivers before diversion into our water supply system, you can see that we're not just made up of the water of the Bow River, but also of all the activities that occur on the land that affect its quantity and its quality. The bow works hard to bring us drinking water, but it also works hard to assimilate the water that we return after we borrow it. Another vast system of urban plumbing brings all of this water back to the rivers. Through work and study, we've learned to understand the environmental carrying capacity of our rivers better. The bow has nudged us by showing signs of stress. Levels of key things, like phosphorus-bearing nutrients, might be okay now, but might not be in the future, with warmer temperatures and lower flows that we might see with changing climate. Last year, the Bow River took away about 150 billion liters, that's about 150 million tons of treated return flow. This is an immense ecosystem service. Imagine a contractor trying to manage an equivalent volume on a construction site. The cost and the implications would be mammoth. So the bow is generous, but it's also, both fle also flexible and hardworking. Calgary, in part because of the heavy lifting of the Bow River, has been able to grow and to prosper, and grow it certainly has. Calgary now covers almost 800 square kilometers and makes up about one-tenth of all the land that drains into the river upstream of the city. With the land use change that occurs with a developing municipality, impacts to water quality and water quali quantity have occurred. Again, the bow has acted like a teacher. It has patiently waited while we've learned to build systems more like its natural ones. Green stormwater infrastructure, bioengineering approaches, and constructed wetlands are helping us manage this progression of impacts. Like a fractal, when we replicate natural systems at multiple scales, outcomes are better for both our constructed systems and the natural ones. Net sediment from Calgary's stormwater system has not increased since about 20 years ago in 2005, despite significant growth and intensification of land use. And we've been able to do this for the Bow River by using systems more like its natural ones. While the Bow River is very hardworking and very instructive indeed, but it also has a playful, less businesslike side. On any given day, thousands walk by the river, sit by the river, run and cycle. In the wintertime, folks walk and run and skate on side channels on the river. In the summer, on a hot day, thousands take to rafts and inner tubes to cool off. Fly fishing, which is a, a common pastime, also supports significant local industry, and that can be done right in the middle of downtown. Imagine the juxtaposition. Research that we've done has shown that 88% of Calgarians use and value our riparian areas. We've used this information to build riparian, habitat, and recreation programs to make sure that recreational approaches are fitting with the natural functions of the river. So the river knows how to work hard, but it also encourages us to play hard as well. But our natural systems are not always playful. With all that steep, high elevation terrain we talked about earlier, the Bow River can ramp from normal, docile summer flows to 10 times higher in just hours. This is part of the Bow's natural system. It's part of what our friend is and needs to continue to be. In 2013, we saw the highest river flows since 1897, and this resulted in part of what became the costliest natural disaster in Canadian history at the time. Severe erosion occurred along 20% of the river bank length. Transportation, utilities, and telecommunications were disrupted. Our downtown, a regional, if not national, economic engine halted. Life safety risk, and regrettably, even a fatality, resulted. 70,000 Calgarians were evacuated, including my family and my kids, then two and four years old, due to, interestingly, an evacuation trigger that I initiated, initiated while on shift responding to the event. For the first time in over seven decades, we were dramatically seeing this dimension of our friend, the Bow River's nature. Interestingly, regular flooding actually occurred before the city had grown much, 
floods comparable to or larger than 2013, it actually happened back in 1879, 1897, 1902, 1915, 25, 29, and 1932. But by the time 2013 rolled around, few remembered what our still wild and natural friend could do. So from the 1930s all the way to the early 2000s, really by nothing other than meteorologic luck, we didn't hear all the tones of the Bow River's voice. Personally and professionally, 2013 became an opportunity for me to respect the full character of the river and to flow forward with my community by creating resilience through a more symbiotic relationship with my friend, the river. It did take time, but as we studied and restudied the hydrology, the hydraulics, the morphology, the habitat, and the water quality, we got reacquainted with our friend after this big event. Given the range of functions and characteristics we talked about that the river provide, our resilience menu evolved into a real combo meal to meet the bow where it was, local and regional, structural and non-structural measures had to be combined to work together. And we were conscious while we were solving the problem of flooding to not create new problems with water quality, habitat or other water resources dimensions. I'm happy to say we've now reached the point where 55% of the damage that we had back in 2013 has been eliminated. And by next year, 2025, that will rise to over 70%, given work that's already underway. Even better, while we were doing this, we've been able to improve water supply resilience, improve fish habitat, protect water quality, and actually enhance riparian area function. So though we learned a great deal, the thing we learned that maybe is key was to keep listening to this dynamic, ever-evolving natural system. Like other natural systems, the bow is a complex, interconnected, and interconnecting system. Listening, I mean really listening, as we would for any friend, helped us build a more resilient Calgary and a more resilient region. I toast my friend next time I have a glass, and I'll challenge you, the next time you reach for a drink, Remember the bow and other natural systems like it. They may help you build interconnectedness into the systems you use to address the problems in your work and in your life. Now that you're introduced, I hope my friend the bow is your friend too. Cheers.